Welcome to the uh, the Yorkshire Dales of Peterborough. Well, it's not really Peterborough. Uh, we're at Haringworth this morning, and I've only ever driven through Haringworth. I've never walked it, so uh, I've got a little circular walk today um, around this area. Uh, great scope for it to go wrong because uh, a big chunk of the circular walk is on roads, and I don't really want to be on those roads. So uh, I'm going to go off piste if I can pull it off and try and cut across the field. So whenever I plan like that things tend to go wrong and I get lost so it could be fun but yeah it's, it's uh, visually it looks a lovely part of the world not just because of the viaduct behind me but it, it is a little bit of the Yorkshire Dales to me um, and I hope the walk bears that out so yeah that's where we're at we're at Harringworth and we're starting off in the village uh, next to the viaduct I uh, was looking up a few facts about this viaduct uh, last night. It um, was built in the late 1870s uh, to speed up the link from London up to Nottingham. Uh, it, it currently carries the Kettering to Oakham line, which is mainly a freight line. I think there's a couple of passenger services each day, but it's mainly a, it's mainly a freight line. Um, but it's the longest viaduct in the country. Uh, that's made out of brick um, and something I read last night that really had me gobsmacked was that if uh, there's about 20, 20 plus million bricks in this viaduct and if you, if you dismantled it and placed the bricks side by side to create a path five foot wide uh, that path would then stretch from London all the way to York which kind of blew my mind a little bit because that's a hell of a lot of bricks. Um, yeah, it was. It was. There's a few stunning facts about this. It was built in two years, um, which, you know, considering back in the 1870s, they wouldn't have had the bonus of all the construction machinery that you'd expect nowadays. Uh, this was sort of built by hand in two years, and you compare that with projects of a similar scale that we attempt to build today. That's pretty impressive, and it's still standing. But yeah, it's uh, known locally as the Harringworth Viaduct. Uh, I think it's officially called um, the Welland Viaduct because it crosses the Welland Valley. Um, but a mighty, impressive 20 plus million bricks in that, which is uh, pretty staggering. Hope, we hope, I hope we might see a train today. Uh, I don't know, might be in luck, you never know. Being a train spotter, I hope to see something on the trip. Right, crack on. Nice to see the River Welland as a quite cute looking large stream as opposed to the big wide sprawl that it becomes sort of east of, uh, of Market Deeping. It's very nice here. That's the path ahead and on top of the hill is the village of Seaton which strictly speaking is where I should be going and then swinging right but there's a lot of there's about a mile and a half of road walking and I don't want to do that what I want to do is cut the corner off 
over this way now it's not a public footpath but it looks like there is a bit of a path going on here so as long as I can cross the stream I should be able to cut across uh, without using the road so that's the plan let's go and have a look I think the problem's going to be crossing this stream. If I can't get across the stream, I can't cut across the field. I don't fancy jumping that. Tempting, but no, I'm not going to make that. Yeah, not going to be crossing this one, so I'll have to go to plan B. It's annoying. There is a bridge up ahead but I'm going to stick to the path onto the uh, local road just beyond this and then cut across from there. Looks a little bit like a water mill. It's not marked on the map, but it looks like a mill pond in the foreground, and it's on a stream as well. I have to do a bit of homework on this, but I think that's a water mill, former water mill. some clues here some lovely old millstones this is definitely an old water mill superb Eaton Mill doesn't appear on a modern map. I'm gonna to have to dig back on some of my old maps and uh, see what I can find out about this place. Right, 
out on the road section. Oh, what second was that? Looks a bit more interesting. That's the public footpath that goes on up to Seaton, which I really don't want to do. But where we're where we're standing now, I'll just swing the camera around. This is the uh, this is the track bed of the old Rugby to Stamford railway line, which does go in the direction we want to go in. In fact, disused railway lines and old track beds, if I get this walk right, will feature quite strongly from this point onwards. It's just a case of whether I can get along them or not. Um, but yeah, this is this is the rugby to Stamford line track bed. And I'm going to try and follow it for a distance because it'll get me to where where I want to get to. Well, that worked pretty well. Good move. Well, wow, look at that. Railway bridge and station. I don't even know what station that is, but uh, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen once I work it out. Fantastic. An old railway hut there as well. Lovely old canopy, station canopy above the above the red van. <coughs> be worth a quick wander around see what's what People who know me know I'm a complete and utter orchid fanatic and uh, yeah, seeing this reserve it looked about right for orchids but I've had a trample across and there isn't a whole lot going on but I found a little tiny one uh, barely opened 
down by my feet so I, my hunch was right might be some better ones if I uh, spend a bit longer here can't resist having a trawl around a potential orchid site open but that's um, looks like a southern marsh orchid which is about right for the conditions it's pretty boggy here um, yeah there's a little southern marsh orchid let's see if I can find some better ones better one Southern Marsh Orchid, that's a nice one. Well there you go, there's a bonus, or at least for an orchid junkie like me. I wasn't expecting to find orchids on this trip. Uh, grass is too long, orchids are very very fussy creatures and uh, um, if, if they graze the grass down, um, give a little bit more light to these orchids, I think there'd be quite a lot of them growing here, conditions are pretty good. Uh, but the grass is too long, it needs to be looked after, but uh, not renowned as an orchid site, so that was a bit of a bonus, yeah, happy with that. Well the choice now is to follow this road for about one and a half miles before picking up the track back to Harringworth which is definitely not what I want to do. Um, the plan B which is what I thought last night I could pull off with a bit of luck is to head up here and try to pick up one of the old railway track beds in the distance that should take me in the same direction. So it's a bit of a no-brainer really, I'm going to have a go, see where it gets me. A few sheep up there, stampede coming up. Sorry, guys and girls. Just thinking there's more of them than me. I come in peace. Is this one dead or asleep? He's gonna have a shock in a minute. He's probably been out on the beer. He was sleeping well, that's for sure. <laughs> what on the 
hoping the old track bed is going to be just past these gates up ahead. Looks like somebody's tried to block access to this. get through there if I wanted to. There's a plan B here. Well, there's a style but it doesn't go anywhere. to get through here because there's going to be an arch underneath the viaduct in theory. Oh, heavens. didn't work. I'm going to move on up now to the next track bed. There are railway beds everywhere here. This isn't the track bed I want to be on but I'm hoping I might be able to get along this one and hook back down again. Otherwise it's going to be a walk back to the road. I don't want to do that. We're getting underneath the railway line at the end of the viaduct. track bed here and up through the gate used to be the line from Rugby to Stamford um, but about 200 yards behind me now it, it's split into two and it's the other line I want to be on which is the line that goes across to uh, Yarwell Junction and onto the Neen Valley Railway and obviously across to Peterborough and it was built to sort of shorten the length between Rugby and Peterborough and became the Neen Valley line I need to get on that which means heading back south somehow and trying to pick up the track bed. Should be in the trees there in the distance. Grown down there. What do you 
reckon. I think I'll stay up high for a short distance to see if I can drop down further along. Not quite sticking to plan, but as long as I follow the course of this line, I know I'm going to the right spot. So all is good. the route I was looking to travel along but it's a bit overgrown so probably made a wise choice there. fence. <laughs> oh dear. I'm now stuck in a field, I need to get out of this field. I'm hoping I can get through in a corner here. Ha. Oh, that'll do. Get ripped to pieces, but it'll do. In case you wonder where the railway's gone, it ran across this field, but there's no trace of it obviously left anymore. Uh, I just have to trust my sense of direction. But if we can get out of this field, somewhere up ahead, touch wood, should be able to pick it up again on the other side of the road that's running alongside us, and then we'll be good to go. There you go, that was easy enough. Right. Need to pick up that railway line now. I think that's it. Let's see if we can get on it. Climb this fence. Definitely the railway line. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, that looks doable. This, uh, this line that runs uh, off the Rugby to Stanford line to head across to Kingscliff uh, and then on to uh, Yarwell Junction, the Neen Valley line, it's quite significant in the history of the area, quite a significant build. It was more than just the railway route, it actually took trade away from Stamford and to Peterborough. And when the decision was made to build this, instead of just taking the line up to Stamford, it really signalled the start of Peterborough evolving from a small market town to being the bigger um, settlement in terms of Peterborough versus Stamford. It didn't go down very well. It didn't go down very well at all. Um, Stamford was meant to be and had always been bigger than Peterborough. Uh, that's why the A1 went close to Stamford but not Peterborough or the Great North Road as was. Um, so yeah, this, this little diminutive railway line swung the balance quite massively towards Peterborough. I won't be walking all the way to Peterborough. I'm getting stung to death at the moment. Ha! Serves me right. The observant among you will notice and be saying, he's going back the other way again. <laughs> and I am. I'm retreating. Um, if I got my jeans on, I could have made it through there. But those stinging nettles were deadly. And I can deal with stinging nettles. I'm used to them, but whoa. They were like wasp stings and I'm not going to traipse through about three quarters of a mile to a mile of that. I don't know what state I'd be in at the end of it. I only have shorts on so I'm going to try and follow once again the, uh, the track bed from alongside it. It's a bit more comfortable. Right, crack on. Oh dear. Now what? Uh, this is fun. Gee, you've got the Grand Canyon down there. Don't know if you can see better than I can. I'm not getting across there. I've got to get back up on the track bed get across. How does one do that? The answer is through here and getting stung to death again. Ah, yeah. Okay. never do this one in high heels. I've got to get across there, so this don't get any easier. Ah, well I've got on top of it, it's got to get down the other side now. Oh dear, he's done look good. The hell. Uh, I'm a long way up and the bridge ain't a bridge anymore. So now I'm in trouble. I've got to get down somehow. I ain't going this way. Oh dear. Ouch. Stung to death. Getting off that one. Well the theory was there was a bridge over the stream but the bridge is broke. So I'm now back down the other side of the bridge on the field 
with a bloody big stream in front of me. So I've got to get over that stream somehow. The problem is it looks like it's been dug out by somebody, which makes it very difficult to cross. Let's go have a look. Yeah. Truth. Oh, it's too far down. Too far down. Ah. Gonna have to wander down and hope that it gets easier somewhere. Things ain't getting any easier. Still can't find a way over. Problem I've got is I'm following a tributary of the Welland, dug deep as it heads down towards the River Welland, which isn't far away now. I need to get over this, otherwise I'm stuck because uh, I ain't crossing the Welland. So the bridge over the Welland is the other side of this stream. So I've got to cross this stream somehow keep fingers crossed an opportunity comes up in the next uh, five minutes or we're in the well and oh, that won't be good well, this is about my last chance to get over this one now so at least I can get down low there that's got to be my chance no nope, that's not going to work the bank's too soft to get any sort of uh, leap and there's also a guy that land rover very close by so that's kind of made this one a non-starter i told you today could be fun <laughs> The problem we're going off piste is that uh, you bump into the landowner on whose land you probably shouldn't be on. Well, I shouldn't be on it. Uh, he can end badly, and he ain't far away from me, so it's only feeding the sheep. Mate. I'm going to keep my head down so he's moved. He's going at last. Ah dear. It's a good job this one's not going out live. Right? The last 20 minutes has been a complete disaster. Completely penned in by streams that I can't cross. I'm slowly getting direction back now, but I'm still running towards the well end and I've still got to head across some more streams. I need bridges, otherwise this walk's going to end, end early. But hey, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there. Don't give up. My favourite uh, wildflower, geranium pretense. Always good to see these. Uh, a bridge. Could do with a few more of these. Given the land is rising up ahead, we must be coming to the to the uh, river well and now. So, my last chance to get to where I wanted to get to is to head left somehow and avoid hitting the river. We shall see.
Well, I'm on the banks of the Welland, so um, as long as I can stay on the bank of the Welland, I should get to my destination, Turtle Bridge, a medieval crossing. Stick with it. I've got a bad feeling about this uh, tree line coming down from the left. I think there's going to be a stream there which puts me in the same spot as I was in half an hour ago which is I've got to cross it I bet you there's no bridge fingers crossed yep not looking too promising that same brook it's the same one that I couldn't cross earlier mind you that looks doable I could get down there it's a case of getting up the other side though well, I made it, I came through there, I got to there, and then I jumped. I nearly sunk, as you can see from my boot print. <laughs> I've now got a muddy boot, but that'll do. Victory to me. Well, it's been a hell of a journey to get here, but... We got here. This is kind of at the uh, top of the walk before turning back to Harringworth. This is Turtle Bridge and it's grade two listed and it's old. Um, parts of it, and I would suggest it's the bit right in the center of picture, um, dates back to the 12th century. And I think there's been add-ons in the 14th century, I think again in the 18th or 19th centuries. So it's a patchwork over the ages and it's been widened as well. Um, but yeah, it's a grade two listed bridge and very, very old. It's got a tree stuck in it as well. But yeah, you don't get many bridges dating back this far. Turtle Bridge. Well, we're in Northamptonshire, but let's pop into Rutland. Hmm. Didn't do anything for me. Happy to be in Northamptonshire. You can see these are uh, modern tunnels to take away flood water. It's quite interesting though to see next to them. That is definitely not modern. Definitely not modern. Probably one of the older parts of the bridge. Right, it's a case of uh, following the opposite bank of the River Well and now back into Harringworth. I do love my geraniums.
I promised you a train. Somewhere over there, in the distance, is a train. Freight train. There you go. One of those lovely villages that's got uh, signs on the houses that tell you what they used to be, like the old smithy centre left. That must be the vicarage, as it's next to the church. Very nice. It's Harringworth Church. Like most churches in this area, it seems parts of it date back to 1200s, around that time, but most of it's uh, mid 1800s. And as usual, the old bit's the tower. Not the steeple. The steeple was added later, but the tower below the steeple dates back to about 1200. Uh, most of the rest of it was severely modernized in the 1800s, as a lot of the churches around here seem to be. You get a sense of the age of this uh, 12th century part of the church. It just looks older. Here we are once more. There you go, made it in the end, uh, despite getting lost a few times and stung to death. Who cares, good walk, lovely morning. Uh, not quite a circular walk. Be one of those strange shapes you used to see in maths lessons and didn't know the name for. Uh, but we got there, achieved everything I want to achieve, just in a slightly different way to the plan. Makes it more fun. Oh, home now.